Good day, hello. Hi, I'm here today to do my November wrap up. I almost forgot the month. In November, I read six books, which is pretty good for me. I did have a lofty TBR of like 10 books, but I, it was pretty obvious that wasn't gonna happen. I was in a course like 10 hours a day for two weeks so like I didn't read pretty much for like two weeks of the month. In terms of quality though it was an excellent reading month because I didn't have below a three star. I only had one that's a three star which is actually one that I kind of been thinking about changing to a four star so really it was like four and five star reads all around. It was Native American Heritage Month in um, November. Uh, I'm Canadian and our Indigenous Heritage Month is in June but I still kind of wanted to participate in Digithon. I didn't really participate. Like, I just read books that were uh, by Indigenous authors, so my cat is playing with a leaf off of my plant. I didn't really participate in the readathon, but I did just try to read mostly books by Indigenous authors, and I succeeded. I read four books by Indigenous authors, and then one book that was not by an Indigenous author, but was about um, Indigenous issues, uh, social justice issues. We'll get into it. We'll get into it. So the first book that I read um, in November was One by One by Ruth Ware. This is basically a murder mystery. It really feels like it falls in, it's following along in the footsteps of like classic murder mystery, like Agatha Christie, like whodunit kind of things. And I really loved it. I love that aspect of it. It follows this group of uh, employees that work for this um, app basically um, called Snoop which is this music app that allows you to like snoop on what other people are listening to. So that was just a really cool premise so basically all these employees um, go on like a retreat to this ski lodge I guess in the French Alps and then you know murder happens and it really is kind of a whodunit type mystery. We have two points of view in this book so we have one of the um, employees or at least she was used to be an employee at this uh, Snoop company and then we have one of the employees of the ski lodge But I will just say this is the book that I gave three stars in retrospect I want to give it a higher rating But like while I was reading it although I really enjoyed it And I would say that I had one of the most enjoyable experiences I've had reading a Ruth Ware book while reading this one just because I really enjoyed the characters and the kind of mystery elements and the setting and the way it was written but it wasn't really a mystery it wasn't that because it was like pretty obvious from like chapter two or three who the murderer was and so I was like oh it's so obvious it can't be that person and then I thought oh it's someone else and then I went back to oh it's that person and yeah it actually was that person all along and so it really in terms of like thriller mystery <laughs> kind of fell flat because it just was too obvious and maybe she wanted to do it that way um, but I don't know, that, that part really fell flat, but the rest of the book, for me, I really enjoyed. Like I said, the setting and this like isolated snowy kind of ski lodge, it was so cool. I really loved the characters of Aaron and Danny who were the employees at the ski lodge. They were just, their friendship and they were just really cool characters and I loved it. I, I, my cats are honestly being so rude right now. I'm trying to film a video. I thought the, the whole Snoop app concept was kind of cool and I really enjoyed reading the book. And I especially loved, even though I kind of knew what was going to happen at the end, that, 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 that final push, that crazy like action sequence was really fun to read. So it's kind of a mixed bag for this one because like in terms of a mystery thriller and like being super shocking and having crazy twists, it didn't really, but it was really enjoyable to read. So I don't know, Ruth Ware is a very perplexing author. <laughs> Because her other two books that I've read, The Death of Mrs. Westway and The Turn of the Key, I really didn't know what was going to happen in the end of those ones. But the enjoyment factor for reading the entire book to find out what was happening at the end, or what was going to happen, and the twists, I, it wasn't that enjoyable. Neither of those books were super enjoyable reads or fun to read or, you know, you know whatever. But this one, although I knew the whole time kind of who, who the killer was, it was the most fun I've had reading of a, a thriller in a long time. So, very weird. I don't know. Next we have Highway of Tears by Jessica McDermott. Um, this is a true story of racism, indifference, and the pursuit of justice for missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. Jessica McDermott is a Canadian journalist, and she basically went and spent a ton of time up in northern BC and collected a ton of information on... Um, the missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls issue, especially in Northern BC, um, 
as well as across Canada, um, and met with a lot of families and really learned the stories of who these women and girls are that have gone missing and been murdered. And this is kind of a collection of their stories and their family stories. And this book, I think, is really for their families and their friends. And um, I would say definitely pick it up if you want to get more informed and want to kind of expand on your knowledge and kind of fill in the blanks in this um, this large picture of the missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls in Canada issue um, and the police turning a blind eye or not really caring for so long. Uh, the rest of um, Canada and the world kind of turning a blind eye for a long time too and like not really caring, not really taking things seriously. There was a touching book and I did kind of cry at the end. It was a bit gut-wrenching. Definitely worth the read and y'all should read it. Then we have The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. This book has been super hyped lately. So this is basically about four indigenous men, I think it's four, in an area that they weren't supposed to be hunting in. And there were some other factors involved that I won't spoil, I guess. Like 10 years later, is it 10 years later? I don't know how many years later it is. One of them feels like they're being haunted or being hunted by something. And basically, yeah, this entity uh, is after them for revenge. The ending and that final few chapters was really freaking crazy and made me totally jump on board with like this is an incredible horror book. Um, it is really fucked up. Of course for non-indigenous people like myself you know we may not get certain things in this book and certain reasons why things are the way they are or why things must happen this way or the beliefs that they have. It's not that difficult to try to understand and to try to um, empathize and try to piece together different parts of people's other people's cultures to try and understand better. Also it was fucking scary. Like I wasn't like scared scared uh, but horror books I don't think like, I don't find them, like, scary, like, um, I think the horror movies are fucking scary because it's the visual aspect of it, but this book was definitely deeply, deeply disturbing. Well, the next book is A Mind Spread Out on the Ground by, um, Alicia Elliott. So this book is a collection of essays that's pretty autobiographical about Alicia Elliott's life and experiences and opinions. Um, she was born to a Haudenosaunee father and a white Catholic mother? I think she's like a devout Catholic um, in in New York State and then later on when she was like 13 they moved to um, Ontario and so she is now a part of the Six Nations of Grand River. She, t she talks about the Indigenous experience in America and Canada sort of but it's more so her own personal experiences of growing up in poverty and um, dealing with a parent with mental illness and another parent who's kind of abusive um, and also sort of distant. She really talks a lot about um, like race and racism, mental illness, poverty, sexual assault, gentrification, um, parenthood, and also being a child and like just oh so many things and I gave this five stars I will just say because it was incredible. Not only was it super well written and just um, I don't want to say enjoyable, but like enjoyable to read. Like it was a good experience reading it. Like it wasn't like, oh, it was a slog, it was dry, or it was poorly written. Like it was not at all. It was very well written. It was very um, insightful and just super good. Reading the, the things that she went through in her childhood and her youth and the experiences she had, I was just like so um, touched that she would share those, all of those things with the reader with us because it was so, things that are so close things that you know like most people probably would not want to share with people and she really gave us a window into growing up indigenous and you know dealing with all those issues that were listed before it was brilliant and I think I said in my Goodreads review <laughs> that everyone should read this and uh yeah I stand by it now we're on to Alatsue by Darcy Little Badger oh another five star read Darcy Little Badger is a a uh, member of the Lipa and Apache tribe in Texas. This is her first novel. She's like a geoscientist or something. She's like an earth scientist, so she's like brilliantly smart. And she's also an incredible writer. Like, how how do you get 
everything. This is a young adult novel and I guess looking at my reading this was the only young adult novel I read this month in November. Um, but it honestly I'm not and this isn't a bad thing necessarily but although the, the main character is like 16 or 17 and young adult age and I know this is branded as young adult it really read kind of middle grade in that whimsical fun way where there was and you know like the characters um, although they're older teenagers they're really like innocent and um, and childlike not childish but just childlike in that way and so I would say yeah it's interesting because it is it is YA but it does feel like middle grade and especially you know with the cover and with um, the like illustrations at the beginning of every chapter like it definitely feels middle grade. Elatsue, our main character, at the beginning of the novel has a dream I think? A dream experience where um, she finds out that her cousin has died or um, she believes right away has been murdered and so her and her family and her ghost dog so she has this power where she can summon ghosts and so her dog that passed away um, is now her like ghost companion and so anyway um, her and her mother and sometimes her friend because he like travels through fairy rings I don't really I don't know um, they go, they travel to where the cousin lives in this small town in Texas and where he lived. And she is trying to investigate um, his murder because everyone else is ruling it as a car accident or whatever, but she believes he was murdered. And um, so they find out there's this weird things going on with this shady doctor in town. And it's basically this whole mystery. I don't want to really spoil it, but there is like... It's weird magical elements, weird magic going on, but it is just so wonderful. I can tell that she does draw on her um, earth scientist background a little bit because she does kind of bring in um, little snippets of these like historical extinct animals as ghosts and things. Like it's really fun and it was just absolutely um, the most enjoyable experience I've had in a while. Like it was just so enjoyable. Did I say five stars? And there's also this historical element of um, we kind of follow, we get little snippets throughout the book of her sixth great grandmother and the um, saga journey she went on as well. And so it has like this this kind of expansive family element as well as this like young adult murder mystery kind of thing. And although it is very sad in the fact that like her cousin was murdered, never once did I feel sad reading this. Never once did I get a sad vibe. Literally cannot recommend this enough. I cannot wait to see what Darcy Little Badger comes up with next. Like, I really hope she keeps publishing novels. Honestly, I feel like, and I've heard this before as well from other uh, readers, that she could keep writing in this world, in this universe, and she could just keep, um, you know, having stories where Alatsaway is, like, solving mysteries and stuff. Like, it's just, it could be so brilliant. And I don't know if she will do that, but, like, she could do anything with this this world. It's, like, you know, a magical, our world, but magical and the characters were just freaking flawless. It was, it was just flawless. It was so good. Lastly, the last book that I'm going to talk about, I finished right at the very end of the month. It is The Break by Katharina Vermette. That's at least how the name is pronounced in the audiobook. Um, because I totally butchered it in my December TBR. Or November TBR, sorry. Katharina Vermette is a Métis author from Manitoba. The Break is a story about... Well, geez, it's really... A saga of this family living in a, a small town I imagine in like middle like I'm imagining probably like uh, Manitoba or, or Ontario it was very wintry and cold like Manitoba Stella looks out her window at dusk and she sees somebody struggling on the break and the break is this like field this like stretch of land uh, barren land kind of outside or on the edge of town or whatever and basically that's where it starts and it follows a bunch of different characters and so it basically outlines all these characters in the back but you find out as you're reading that they're all related except for the one police officer um who they follow like everyone it's this big family so we have stella who's this, this young mother who witnessed this horrible crime basically and we have lou who's a social worker cheryl's an artist paulina a single mother uh, Phoenix, a homeless teenager, and it's all sort of related, um, and a lot of them are part of the same family. It all centers around this terrible crime that happened to one of them, uh, one of their girls, um, Emily, who's a teenager, and a, a really horrific event happened, and so it spurs off this story where we kind of, we follow 
all of these characters and we learn about all their lives and we learn about people they've lost and, and tragedies that have happened. I give it four stars. I really enjoyed every minute of it. Like I didn't ever be like, oh, when is this gonna end? Or, you know, which with these kind of literary fiction books, you know, sometimes that happens where you're like, ugh. This is so dry, ugh, whatever. Like, no, it was really enthralling. It, it switched up characters um, often enough that like there was always something new, something interesting happening and you're learning new things. It was really like tragic, but also heartwarming. I'm, gl I'm so glad I finally read it because I really had no idea what it was about besides like this little blurb on the back. All right, so that's it. That's all that I read in November. Really good reading month. Like, like I said, they were all pretty much four or five stars. Like even one by one, which I only gave three stars was still really enjoyable and maybe I would change it to a four star. Like it was a really solid month. I'm currently reading uh, Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse, which is a epic fantasy by Rebecca Roanhorse, the author of, um, what are those books called? Trail of Lightning, Storm of Locusts, the Sixth World series, I think. And she is also a Native American author who, so I wanted to read this book in November, but I didn't quite get it finished. I am about a hundred pages in. Um, and it's really good so far. So this is the first thing that I'm reading in December. That's it. That's everything. Um, I hope that your reading has been going well. And if not, well, you know, probably you're busy doing other things. Or you're maybe in a reading slump. And reading slumps are natural. Thank you for watching this video. And I will be back soon with another video. Hopefully. Have a good evening, morning, or afternoon, wherever you are. Bye-bye. <laughs> that was like a really fast bye-bye. <laughs> Bye, though. For real.